everyone, I'm Whitney and welcome to my first floss tube video. So uh, you may be wondering who are you or you may be wondering what is floss tube depending on how you found this video and I'm going to answer both of those questions for you. Um, so floss tube is basically the part of YouTube where people talk about all of their cross stitching things and um, as for who I am I am Whitney known around the internet as Whitney sews and I've been posting sewing tutorials on YouTube for almost 12 years so there's a lot of content on this channel already but most of it is sewing related um, but today I wanted to talk about cross stitch because that is what I've been doing a lot of recently and um, there's still going to be sewing stuff on this channel but I'm going to start mixing in some cross stitch content as well. Um, so today is my first floss tube video and I have a lot to talk about. Um, I started cross stitching back in like upper middle school and high school and that was a long time ago. So I have not been cross stitching during the past 15 or so years and then I just recently got back into it and by recently I mean less than two weeks ago. Um, my mom got me on the bandwagon and I've been stitching up a storm since then. So um, I have a blog post that I did recently kind of talking about how I got back into cross stitching and why. Um, I will link that down below in the video description box but the quick recap is I want something that I can do um, like in the evenings when we're sitting around watching a movie. I like to do something with my hands instead of um, just sitting and watching a movie. I like to multitask. And um, so I was trying to think of something that I could do with my hands, but I didn't really want to learn an entirely new skill such as like crocheting. Um, so I was thinking maybe cross stitch could be the thing. And then I found out that my mom had kind of come back into the cross stitching community. And um, she inspired me and she introduced me to floss tube, more specifically to Priscilla and Chelsea. They are a mother-daughter uh, floss tube duo. They kind of remind me of me and my mom. Um, we've done some videos together in the past, me and my mom. And um, so watching Priscilla and Chelsea just kind of reminded us of ourselves. And um, the one thing I really like about their channel is they show how they finish up their cross stitch projects. Because um, back when I was first doing cross stitching, I would enjoy making the item and then as soon as I was done, it basically went in a drawer and never had anything done to it. It was never framed, never um, displayed in any way because I didn't really care for having like cross stitch in frames and I just never really knew what to do with it after that. Um, so now that I've seen all the beautiful finishes that people are doing with their cross stitch, that has what um, really like inspired me and motivated me and I knew for sure that it was what I wanted to get back into because now I know what to do with my things once they are completed. Okay. So that was a long start. So anyway, speaking of things being completed. So um, the very first night that my mom was like telling me about getting back in cross stitching and stuff, um, I was like, okay, I wanna get started. I want to start now. I don't really have any supplies or anything though. So she dug through her sash. She had um, purchased some craft or some cross stitch kits when we both were originally cross stitching that like 15 or more years ago. And so I grabbed one from her sash and it's this cute little bunny and a stocking. And I did make a few changes to it. It was supposed to have a striped stocking and then the like the heel and toe of the stocking are supposed to be um, kind of checkerboard green and white. I cha I changed that and instead I did a solid red stocking just because I, I like that better. And then for the heel and toe I did two different shades of green, a darker green and a lighter green. And then did white at the top of the stocking and then the inside shading is the green as well. So that was really quick. I did it in like three or four evenings and I think it turned out really cute. I wasn't planning on doing the outline back stitching but um, because of the way the bunny is done, you really couldn't tell what was what without the back stitching. So I did go ahead and do it. And then um, now I want to figure out how I can 
finish it into an ornament, like what style I want to do it. I know how to do it. Um, but I have to decide what style I want because I don't want to finish it like it shows on here with the lace. Um, because I'm thinking that next year or the year after we might do kind of a rustic tree with like wood slice ornaments and things like that. Um, that all come from like the trees on our property. So it'd be really um, special because it would be all decorations that either our land provided for us or that we handmade. And so I think this could be really cute on that tree and I want to um, have it to where it would match in a rustic way. Um, so I finished that up and I was so excited about it and um, like completing a project is such a really great feeling and you're just like, woo, that was such a win. I wanted to start right in onto uh, the next project and um, I had very little supplies. So I was back home by this point and I had um, two pieces of the cross stitch fabric that were like six by six and then this funky bag of embroidery floss and both of them the fabric and the floss came in a grab bag at a thrift store a very long time ago and I just happened to hang on to them so none of the flosses are labeled they're pretty much all tangled up um, but that's what I had to work with so I um, was kind of searching around I didn't know what I wanted to do next um, because my mom did give me two other kits, this beautiful um, butterfly kit that finishes five by seven. And then also this cute little bee design that finishes about five by five. Um, but I didn't really want to start right into these. And I was searching around on the internet for just some different designs and things. And I happened to see one that was a bumblebee beehive kind of thing. And it made me think of my sister's store. My sister owns a store, like a little boutique kind of thing. And her logo has a bumblebee and it has some like blue and white hydrangeas. And I thought how cute would that be to like stitch up a little bumblebee thing for her and give it to her as like a surprise gift and she could display it in her store if she wanted. And so I searched and searched and searched and the first one that I had seen is actually the design I went with even though it was smaller than what I wanted. It um, was a design by Ring Cat on Etsy. I will link to it down below. And the entire design finishes at 2.2 inches which is pretty small. But I liked it the best out of all the honeycomb bee designs that I found. So I went ahead and purchased it. It was very affordable. It was like $3. And I knew from the start how I wanted to finish it. I wanted a wooden base and I wanted the blue hydrangeas and stuff. And so I whipped that design up in about four days and then hit the craft store and I finished the entire piece and it looks like this. It is so perfect. I absolutely love it. The only thing I would change at all is if I redid it, I would tilt this just a little bit so the bees are like more flying toward the flowers. Um, I stuck it on like this because it, they were up and down on the pattern and I didn't even think of that until afterwards that I probably should have turned it just a little bit so they were kind of, one of them was kind of pointing toward the flowers. Anyway though, I love it so, so much. I used a mason jar lid to like mount the crochet or sorry, the cross stitch design on. This is just a scrap of fabric for my stash. This is an unfinished um, birdhouse and then one hydrangea flower sprig from the craft store and I am in love with it. I did an entire video where I filmed the process of making this, like every bit of it, um, from the time of when the cross stitching was completed. So it was all the finishing stuff. And I've already posted that video. I will have it linked down below as well. And oh, I'm just so happy. This like makes me so excited about wanting to do more cross stitch because now I can see exactly how I can make the cross stitch designs and actually finish them to be beautiful pieces that can be displayed instead of just sitting in a drawer or 
put in a frame in a way that I don't care for as much. And of course, I cannot keep a secret to save my life, so I was going to wait to share all of this until I could get it to my sister, but we live two hours away from each other and don't see each other that often. So I finally just sent her the pictures of it and was like, hey, I made this for you, surprise. Now I can share the pictures with everyone else. Um, so she obviously has not received it yet. She has not seen it yet in person, um, but she knows about it. And um, yeah, so that is my first like fully finished make ever even though I have completed several different cross-stitching designs. Um, so my next concern was the fact that I have such limited supplies. And my mom had told me to keep an eye out at thrift stores for embroidery floss, fabric, all of that stuff, um, because people will donate it and you can get a pretty good price on it at the thrift store. And she was telling me originally because she wanted me to look for supplies for her, but of course now that I'm cross-stitching too, um, I'm keeping what I find. Um, so I went to the thrift store and I found this piece of Ada 16 count cross stitch fabric. And it measures 30 by 36 inches and it was in the basement of the thrift store where they have a fill a bag for $5 sell. And I only found three things down in the basement. So I went upstairs and asked how much it would be if I didn't find enough to fill a bag. And she was like, oh, it's a quarter each. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I got this huge piece of fabric. It's 30 by 36 inches, like I said, for a quarter. So I was absolutely thrilled with this. So excited. And one of the other things I picked up was this old cross stitch magazine. It is way out of date. It's from 93. Um, but I flipped through it and it actually had a couple projects that I thought were cute. I like this little haunted house on the cover, except for the colors. I don't like the house is like lavender and mint green. So if I did do this, I would change all the colors on it. But the project that really caught my mind, caught my eye is this one right here. It is Christmas ornaments that are like Victorian mice and they are so precious and I just can't get enough of them. I think they're absolutely adorable. I love reading books for my kids that are about little animals like the Lighthouse Family which is about um, a dog and a cat and some little mice who live in a lighthouse and um, we've read the littles and different stuff so I just love little characters like this I think they're absolutely precious um, they do have a finished picture of it but it is really terrible quality so this is what I want to get started on next and they did theirs on white fabric which stands out a lot um, and since I have that rustic tree idea in mind I really want to do some coffee tea dyeing on about half of this fabric that I found hopefully it turns out and um, so I want to do that to the fabric to kind of age it and dull down the brightness so it's more of a brownish color and then start in on doing the little mice cross stitch and hopefully once I tea dye the fabric the cross stitch design won't blend in too much because um, I think most of it was back stitched I believe yeah most of it's back stitched so hopefully it won't blend in too much once I tea dye the fabric. If it does, then I will figure out something else to do. Um, but I also obviously cannot do that design with this sad wad of fabric. So I went to the, the um, craft store, had a little bit of birthday money because my birthday is this week. By the time you see this video, my birthday is over. January 5th, it's my birthday. And um, so I had a little bit of birthday money and I went to the craft store and I spent all of it on floss. 
So I bought um, 34 new flosses. I bought the plastic little cards to put them on. Um, these are a few flosses I did have that were in here that I managed to sort out. And um, yeah, I'm like really happy with how these turned out because I cut the labels off of the um, embroidery floss and used double stick tape to tape the numbers on there so they look super nice and um, all organized and everything. So I am ready to roll as soon as I tea dye my fabric and I can get started on those ornaments. So another thing I started doing in the past week or so was actually designing my own cross stitch patterns. I like creating my own things. That's why I do my YouTube tutorials. I come up with different um, projects and things and design them exactly how I want them to be and then I teach them to you all. So of course as soon as I started cross stitching I started making my own designs because I want to make things that I know that I will like and have them be exactly how I want them. So um, I actually have stitched up one of the samples. This is the back side because I don't want to spoil what it is already. But this is one of the two cross stitch fabric pieces that I did already have in my stash prior to this. Um, but I have started stitching my design on the back. I did all of this in one evening because I was stitching at like super high speed as fast as I could just to see how the pattern would translate from paper onto the fabric. And um, I'm pretty happy with it. There is a few changes that I do need to make obviously um, being my first design. I had a few little errors and things in it. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool to draw something out on paper exactly how I want it and then sew it like stitch it onto fabric and it make the same picture but better you know like it's really cool and I am so excited about this and looking forward to like finishing up the rest of the designs I want it to be a series of them and so it's really fun to be designing all this and actually like seeing it turn out on fabric the way that I want. So yeah, here again is the back of the design. This is just one of them. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. And I'm sorry that I cannot show the front yet or show any more of it because it is like a secret project, sort of. So sorry about that. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is this right here. This is just a note card with um, a little bit of floss on it. And the point of this was when I was working on this project, I had so many like different shades of yellow, yellowish orange, that it was hard to keep track of them because I was stitching like sitting on my bed and the lighting was not the best and they kind of all look really similar. So I cut just a couple inches off of each floss and taped them on here on a white card and I put the symbol like the name of it the symbol that's on the chart and then um, oh the number the Prismacolor number because I was using my Prismacolors to color in the chart that I had downloaded I printed out the like black and white copy colored it in with Prismacolors so that it would match the floss that I was using since I was using just stash floss and not the exact colors that the pattern called for. And then I taped on the floss I selected for that color. And this way when I was stitching along, if I needed to rethread my needle and was trying to figure out which thread was the right one to use, I would just lay it on here on the white part next to them and it was a lot easier to tell which thread was which one. That may sound silly, but it helped me a lot to kind of just keep straight what I was using for which symbol on the chart and everything. And so I've done that as well for the project, this project. Um, and that way also, if I set it down for a few days and you know come back to it later, I'm not like, wait, what, what was I using and all that. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's helpful for anyone else, but I'm definitely going to continue to do this for upcoming projects. Um, I think 
that is it. I would love to know if you cross stitch. Um, like I said, I cross stitched a long time ago back in high school and then um, didn't do anything with it for almost 15 years and then I'm finally back to it as of two weeks ago. And um, so I would love to know if you cross stitch and if so, um, what kind of patterns do you like to do or your, maybe your favorite um, cross stitch pattern designer, like what brand, what um, person do you like their designs of the most? Because I'm definitely looking for suggestions of um, things that I should cross stitch in the future. I think I want to stick with kind of smaller design for now. Um, that way I can continue to stitch them up fairly quickly and um, feel like I'm accomplishing something um, instead of working on the same project for weeks and weeks, months on months on end without actually completing anything because that kind of um, get, can get discouraging if you don't have like a finish in the middle of there. Um, but yeah, so that is what I've done so far what I'm working on and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said earlier, I do have the entire video where I just showed doing all of this finish and I already posted it on my YouTube channel. You can find it linked right over here to the side. If you are new to my channel, I'm so glad you're here. Um, please say hello in the comments and if you have not already, um, please subscribe by clicking my picture right there. I would love to have you around. Um, and for you to watch my other videos. So yeah, until next time, happy sewing and stitching or whatever you like to do. <laughs> Bye.